Let me out of here for two minutes and you'll find what I'm capable of. You're safe in here for the next three days, Doyle. Yes, well, you won't be safe when I get out. None of you will. Any more trouble? We'll keep you in here for weeks. Oh, so what? Are you going to stand there all day and gloat? Bet you're dying for a cigarette. Yeah. Pity against regulations. Hey, I forgot to tell you. We got a new nickname for you. It's old B's idea. Wanna well, know what it is? Vinegar tits. <laughs> hey, how about that, eh? Vinegar tits. You really are the most uncouth slut, Doyle. Oh, don't blame me, Vera. It's old B's idea. She thought it up. Did she indeed? <laughs> Vinegar tits. <laughs> they will hate me at work. I just try to do a good job. Oh, they hate me. <laughs> you know, tonight I, I finally did it. I got the courage to go out. And all I did was make a fool of myself. <laughs> they were... <laughs> They were all laughing at me. I could, I could, I could hear them laughing. They all, they all, they all hate me. Every, everybody hates me. When you finish here, you can start on the next floor. That should keep you out of temptation's way. No smart comments, Bryant? Or do you have to have an audience for that? Impressionable young girls, for instance? What could they possibly see in you? But there again, you're not too choosy yourself. Take Sharon Gilmore. But even she didn't seem your type. What do you do, Bryant? Force them into behaving like animals? Or do you just pick out the simple ones? Whichever it is, your sort should be locked away from young girls altogether. You should take a good look at yourself. A lumbering 40-year-old degenerate. And if I so much as hear a complaint against you again, I'll have you up on another charge. <laughs> I know all about illness. I've had my problems myself, you know. My organs were all out of place. Well, I can't have no more children, except what I've got, of course. Well, praise the Lord for something. Now, open wide. Come on, we're nearly finished. Just a few more mouthfuls. Here. Yeah. Well, what I do first thing in the morning? Uh, I've left me tobacco outside. I'll get it, Mr. McClure. Oh, no, Alan. Well, he's all right. The boy's not hopeless. You see the way he gets under that wagon. Alan, come over here and sit down. Come no, on. No, come here. Oh, God bless his soul. That's the most beautiful thing I've heard in my life. Doug Cutler and uh, his lovely wife, Joy. Well, what about pollination? But I am pollination. I can't dream about being something I already am. I see, it's all terribly complicated. Whether I'm really pollination. Why'd you say that? Well, when you adopted me, did they show you the papers to say that I actually was? You were born in Maru, darling. Your father was French. I've told you a dozen times, if not more. But you said everything was confidential. The names of the parents, yes. Nationality, no. It's not that I don't love you and Dad, it's just that I'd like to meet my mother. My real mother. Sometimes I think I remember, just a little bit. You're far too young. Now, will you please pass me the coriander? I'd like to know my background, where I come from. It's better you don't. Why do you say that? Because relations can be a millstone around your neck. Aren't you happy with us? Yes, I am. 
It's just little enough to know where I belong. Oh, you belong here with us. Darling, you've never worried before. Why this sudden curiosity now? Never mind. Doesn't matter. How'd you like to move to the country, Joy? Hmm? Get away from this, from here. Oh, just sit one second. been thinking was my superannuation and if I sell the land at Kaiwong and sell this house but I love this house well I'll build another one I don't want another one I'm, I'm happy here what's happened what's brought all this about doing that for me. You want to go, you just... What's wrong? And? <clears throat> what I have to say is far from easy. It concerns all of us. But you in particular. I think it's time you knew the truth. I feel, I think, uh, Joy and I have always treated you like you were our own daughter. Well, you are my daughter. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You are my daughter. You're not an adopted child. You're my father? My real father? That's right. If you're my father, then who's my mother? Your mother's a woman called Alice Wilson. She's an Aboriginal. Oh, I can't bear it. It's all so ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> your joy if you'd have known you'd have left me wouldn't you you should have let me make that decision I'm sorry don't touch me please this is Kim everyone this is Judy and Sharon you'll share a room with them Brad Peter and Alan would you like a lot I'll just give her a little bit lots for me though it looks delicious uh, haven't you forgotten somebody? Oh, sorry. Kim, this is Phil. Welcome to Westmead. What's going on? Oh, she's got all this job. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kim? My narrow's stealing it. Peter? Oh, she's got a huge stack in there. We just thought she ought to share it out. Well, that's up to Kim. And if she wants to keep it, that's up to her too. Now put it all back. There's too much for one person. Okay, you two. Back to your homework and I'll be down to talk to you in a minute. Yeah. You nearly had it. Yeah. yeah. Kim. Kim, you're asking for trouble. Can't you share some of it out? I can't. What, are you keeping it for something special? I just need to keep it, that's all. Well, it's not very easy on the others knowing it's in there. Well, maybe I can share some another time, later on. Okay, well, would you like me to look after it for you? No, no thanks, it'll be all right. Well, Kim, I'd find another spot for it all the same because the boys are likely to try again. Well, I could lock it in my suitcase. Good idea. Carol, could I ask you a favor? Of course. I'd rather not do the cooking. Why? I just didn't like doing it. Well, we all have to share in the duties of the house. Well, I could do something else instead, couldn't I? I could sweep. Hmm. I suppose so. But wouldn't you like to try the cooking for a while? You might get to like it. No, not really. Well, we'll have to ask the others. It'll mean that they'll have to take your turn. But I could swap them for something, couldn't I? We'll see. Sharon, Judy, Kim has something she wants to ask you. 
I was wondering if I could swap you for some of your jobs around the house. What for? I'd rather not do the cooking. Well, you can do my share of the ironing. I hate that. I wouldn't mind. Well, cooking's much better. Anyway, now that we're going to be vegetarians, we'll probably have to do our own. Oh, yeah. Well, look, I don't mind if you don't cook. Oh, thanks. Listen, how do you think Kim's going? She'll be okay. The cooking thing was a bit of a disappointment. Oh, well, she's going to have to learn a couple more than that around here. Well, she wants to be a model. That's why she won't eat. She thinks she's too fat. You're joking. She does. <laughs> Did you tell me what you think? Yes, but she won't listen to me. Oh, strange kid. Oh, aren't we all? Kim! This is Carol Davidson. I need an ambulance right away. Please hurry. You have to eat as well. Now, come on. Give it a try. Oh, yuck. What is it? It's chicken soup. Kim, I've brought someone to see you. Hello, Kim. Huh. Hi. Well, now you can show your friends how you can eat. Thank you. How are you feeling? I want to go home. Well, you can, just as soon... I know what they say, but they're wrong. Anyway, I can't eat this stuff. Kim, they aren't keeping you in hospital just for a joke. And you didn't pass out this morning by accident. You are in a serious condition. Well, it's going to get worse in here. No, it won't. Not if you decide to help. Kim. What happened to you happens to lots of girls. Quite a few models, in fact. And it ruins their careers. You can't not eat. You just can't. I eat. Yes, but not enough. Your body needs energy to work. Nobody understands. I hate him here. The nurses don't like me. It's horrible oh, food. Kim. You think I'm mad, don't you? I brought something for you. One of my better shots. I put my address on the back, and when you're better, I'd like you to come and have dinner with me and we can talk. Will you do that? But you have to get better first. Last week, the water was right up to there. It's a huge pig. Just look at that railing. The kids get through it every day. Do you think your people will be able to handle this? My people have a hard time handling themselves, but I'll see what I can do for you. Oh, I'd really appreciate that, Pat. And another one there. Well, what's causing all this? The foundation's sinking or what? Subsidence. Under the whole house, front to back. Caused by that great hole out there. Now, have you rang the council? They must be worried about it, surely. <laughs> they dug it. Why? It was going to be a park. Have you been to see anybody down there? We've spent so long in at the council that Jim and I reckon we're due for long service leave. Now, come and have a look at this. See? You're running off a neighbour's power. The man who drove the dozer ploughed through the water mains and dug up some underground cables. So how long have you been like this? Ten months. Ten months? Then the council's to blame. No, well, yes. Uh, originally, you see, the Taradale Council... Tarakan Heights. Well, Tarakan Heights Council is only 25 years old. The fault actually lies with an older, larger council that originally drew up the plans for this whole area. They missurveyed a few chunks of land, including your bit. Then we have to sue them. No, technically speaking, well, they don't exist. Well, then the new council, Tarakan Heights. Yeah, well, they ordered a resurvey of all the wonky bits, but never forwarded the corrected plans to the gas and sewerage. Water and electricity? Yeah. Well, where does that place us? Well, it means the council's the one at fault. Well, we already knew that, didn't we? I mean, how are we better off with this new map? It's a proof we need to sue their asses off. Excuse me, can I use your... The council has every right to lodge an appeal. It's routine. Well, they can't win, surely. Well, they do have a case, technically. How? Remember how the water and electricity were both up the pole with their maps because they were working from a superseded land survey? Mm -hmm. Well, the DT or land is in the same boat. Legally, you own the block three houses along. Legally, you built on council land, and legally, you are on their property. Oh, that's silly. They weren't to know that. Well, a good solicitor should have picked that up in the conveyancing. The council could well argue that the unlawful placement of your house is what made their whole cave in. There is a precedent and action is certainly possible. They might sue the Murrays for damaging their hole. Basically, yes. And actions might be brought against your neighbours against each other in respect of construction on the wrong box. Oh, this is crazy. There must be a way out of it. 
There is. You could sue your solicitor who did the conveyancing. Technically, he dumped you right in it. Technically, he's dead. Oh. Do you have any surviving family? We'll sue the estate. We'll sue the bank. We'll sue the Board of Works. We'll sue the insurance company. <laughs> We would have been married the following autumn, at Easter. I always wanted to be an Easter bride. It was going to be his last tour of duty. And we were going to buy that little wooden house that looked out over the bay. The one that was just on the road outside of town. It's all run down now. Some heavy type stories. Yes, yes, I, I know the one. It was beautiful then. Three bedrooms. Plenty of room for children. <laughs> he was such a good man. A very good man. The night before he left, he wanted to make love to me. I think he felt something. I think he... He thought it might be the only time. And I said no. <laughs> we were well brought up, you see. I, I, I didn't think I should. Not if... Not if I wasn't married. I often wish... If I could just have that night back. Just that one night. <laughs> that's, that's my engagement ring. I keep it in a drawer all year. But on Anzac Day, I take it out and I wear it. Just for the day. <laughs> Denial shows a consciousness of guilt. I object to my friend's interruption. An inference can be drawn that he knew what was in the package. A more useful inference is that this police officer is waging a personal vendetta against my client. Thank you. That's an important. You can do that. Yeah. Call the next matter, please. The matter of Frederick Allen Smith. Why is that prosecutor trying to keep me inside? I don't know. Then find out. Off we go. Get out of it, pig face, or I'll tear you apart. No worries. Johnny, don't! Oh, not without your knife, you won't. Where are you taking me? Oh, we've got your nice room booked in the Riverside Hilton. Oh. Johnny! It's not fair! 
Yes, I agree, yes. Johnny, I'll get you for this. You're just a load of rotten, stinking, lousy pigs. Thank you, and good night. Well, 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 look who's here. Marlon Brando again. Good morning, good morning. Did Jenny, you sleep well? You OK? Yeah, I'd like you to wish you all the very best in court. May the best man win. There's always a bet here for you if you want one. I at least have me shades. Huh? Sunglasses. Oh, yes, of course. Mm. Apparently, he's still determined to take a dim view of the proceedings, isn't he? Uh, Johnny, what have they done to you? You look ill. Get lost. I don't know what I'm going to do with you, Chrissy. You worked in the kitchen, the garden, the library, now the laundry workshop. Every time you come back and tell me it isn't exactly what you want, what exactly do you want? You. Now, I'm being serious. So am I. It would appear that your visits here have been a waste of my time. You bastard. Oh, look, Chrissy, don't make a fool of yourself. Well, it's all right for you, ain't it? You can go home to your wife every night. What am I supposed to do? Look, Chrissy, come in. Well, that'll be all for now. Anyway, Chrissy, you can stay working in the laundry. Send the next girl in. Hmm? Well, speak up. You needn't be afraid of Smith. You'll be protected. Go on, love. Tell him what happened. me. I killed your husband. Well, you don't know what it's like, do you? Locked up night after night without a man? Oh, thanks to you, I'm about to find out. Well, if it isn't dear old Meg Jackson. But you're really glad to see me, eh? You're nothing but a big bag of wind. No one's going to help you. You want to know why? Because Sharon and me have got it all sewn up, see? And uh, if you ever do get out of here, we're going to be waiting for you. We'll probably start by uh, giving you a short back and sides. Or maybe the silent treatment till you really crack. Oh, but it's the nights that are going to get to you the worst. Lying there all alone, too scared to open your eyes, wondering where you're going to cop it. Oh, 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 talking about your baby's life. But you said you might not have to do a transfusion. Yes, but if I do, I must have a donor standing by. I don't know how I can help you. Karen, you've got to face up to it. You've got to tell me the father's name or you're putting your daughter's life on the line. Clive and I have waited years for this baby. Now we've got our little girl. We're going to make wonderful parents. We're so happy. Don't you understand that? <laughs> Harry and Clive have been friends all their lives. When they left school, they went camping together, working holiday. They traveled everywhere together. Sometimes when a man gets married, he, he loses touch with his friends, but well, Harry and Clive, they, they just seem to include me. Oh, Harry's away a lot, but Whenever he came to town. Listen, no, Doc, if you'd rather rest, I can... No, no, I, I'd really like to talk. I, I'd like to tell someone. You see, I... I feel so guilty. Clive always wanted a baby. It was me that kept... Putting it off and putting it off. I, I needed this, I needed that. I wanted to go here, there, everywhere. When I did give in, say yes, I had trouble. It, it looked as though I couldn't have children. Clive blamed me, said I'd been on the pill too long. Oh, things got really bad for a time there, and he... Uh, shot through to Sydney for a few weeks. 
I thought he'd gone for good. And Harry came around. I don't know how it happened, but oh, I needed comforting. He... We both felt terrible after. But we thought if we didn't talk about it, if we never mentioned it again, then it didn't matter. And we, we haven't mentioned it since. Till now. Clive came back. Oh, things were better than they'd ever been. And when I found out I was pregnant, it was like a dream come true. I never even thought it wasn't his baby. You must have known it was possible after the time with Harry. Oh, yes. But I kept pushing it to the back of my mind. I did so want it to be ours, me and Clive's. Why did he have to find out? Why? Complication at birth. Placenta separated. It doesn't happen very often. It was bad luck that it happened to you. Oh, yes. Bad luck. I don't know Clive very well, but I've seen him with you over the past few months. There's no doubt he loves you. Give him time to settle down. Talk to him. Give him time to work it out. Get him forgive me. Not just because he'll never be able to trust me again, but because of what I've done to his relationship with Harry. You see, Clive's a dreamer. And I've shattered his dream. And I've spoiled my own dream. The time's pressing. <laughs> you can't leave us here like this, please. Let Andrew go, please. Oh, now she remembers she's a mother. <laughs> Sorry, Connie. You could try yelling, but it won't do you much good. <laughs> The whole area is set up for redevelopment. Most of the houses are all like this. Empty. Waiting to be leveled. Sir! So, you can scream all you like, darling. No one's gonna hear you. He's leaving. I don't believe it. Thank heavens you're here. Oh, Connie, the bar is yours. Oh, Mrs. Hackett, I, I can't work. Look. I've got a doctor's certificate. This is Cuddles. This is the man that saved my life. Cuddles. Mm. Stand by for intake. Number one, this one's on film. And play. It's all in your mind, don't get contorted. Stop a lady, bend your back and forward. Drop the apartment on something that is not. This is ridiculous. Get rid of him. You can't fire him, he's your lead. So get me another one. He's perfect. Uh, no, no, Stan. This is Kieran. Uh, hi, Kieran. Can I make up a wardrobe over here? G'day, what's your name? Andy. Andy. Okay, Andy. Can you dance? Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Here's what I want you to do. She looks so awesome. Maybe I can... No, that's just that's more like it. Yes, indeed. He was brilliant. You are brilliant. You're just brilliant. So talented, Andy. You, um... You don't have an agent, do you? No? You've got a gorgeous body, though. Anyone ever told you that? Of course they have.